Well, today we are actually not cooking. We thought we would show you how we prepare for the barbecue season, which is just about to start. And also talk a little bit about kitchen economics. So to quote Bradley Robinson from Church Barbecue, this is some meat. <laughs> which some good meat. <laughs> some good meat. More precisely, this is uh, Black Angus from Creekstone Farm, USDA Prime, seven kilo whole lip off rib roll. So really big, nice piece of meat, and I look very much forward to see how marbled it is once we cut it open. So first up, let's get it out of the cryo pack. This is beautiful. <laughs> A lot of fat cap also. Well, this has been sealed nicely. Just in from the US. There we are. And this is all the myoglobin. And this is one, also one thing I want to talk about. This ain't blood. This is myoglobin. It's a protein in the meat. Blood runs in the veins and that's drained when the cow is slaughtered. So there's nothing bloody about it. There is no such thing as a bloody steak. So now we take some kitchen paper and we pat it dry so we get a clean surface and moving on with a very sharp knife that's super important when we're doing this and then as you might be able to see this end is pretty straight but this one over here has like a curve so we have to square that one off so i'm gonna cut down here square off that and it, trust me it's not going to waste this is gonna go into some nice mince but look at the marbling in that Ooh, baby. God. That is just beautiful, prime black Angus. So that goes for minced meat. And then let's see, we want to cut this into steaks that are about, I would say, two fingers thicker. Yeah, just not shy, more. Yeah, okay. Just shy of two fingers, I would say. I like to mark it up like this so I can, mm. so I get more or less the same thickness to them. So it's easier when you cut them, so we see how many we're gonna get a little bit different so I like mistakes thick I think I'm gonna make those two a little bit wider so two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen nice steaks not bad Beautiful. so since I'm a lefty start from this end so we cut a little bit thicker one the two first here <laughs> That's that's a beauty. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a good. We will weigh them after. I will show you. But this is a good five, six hundred gram steak. Very nice. No, but it is worth it to buy like this. The whole rib roast yeah. here. And I mean, we got it at a sixty-three euro almost yeah. per kilo, I mean, uh, which is nothing compared to what you're gonna pay in the butcher. If you go to a butcher here in Europe. Then uh, a kilo of Black Angus Prime like this will cost you, for a ribeye, will cost you upwards to 100 euros per kilo. I know it's cheaper in the States, but in Europe, that's what we are paying for this. And we get it here at 63, so that's a lot of saving, and we get prime meat for a reasonable price. So wholesale, that's the way to go. And then we will show you a little bit later how we make that ready for the whole season. It's uh, some good tricks here. Uh, this is going to help us through a big part of the barbecue season this year, that's for sure. <laughs> Some are looking good already. <laughs> Absolutely. And we are also going to make two of these into a little steak experiment. I'll explain that later when we vacuum seal them, because then we're going to do a seasoning experiment with them for the next episode, where we're actually going to cook this off on our new kettle joe, Camaro joe kettle joe. Well, that's gonna be fun. That is just a beautiful tray of meat. And obviously we cannot keep this in the fridge because then they will start going off before we can possibly eat them. So we have to put them in the freezer. And regarding kitchen economics, to do this, you need to get a vacuum sealer. It doesn't have to be expensive. I think, what did we pay for this? 100 euros, 100 bucks, something yeah. like that, nothing. It's just a simple vacuum sealer, but if you put this in a Ziploc bag and in the freezer, then the myoglobin will continue to oxidize and that will make it brown. It doesn't look so nice. And it will also crystallize on the surface and dry out. The meat you will get freezer burns. So really, if you want to go into this making meat 
and store it for a longer period of time, you need a vacuum sealer. So, vacuum bag and a nice, big, beautiful stake into the bag it goes. And then we're gonna seal that up in this very easy. There we go, nice and vacuumed and sealed, but you see this has one seal. We are gonna give it a double seal because many times we take them straight from the freezer and into a sous vide bath and then you want to have a double seal. You don't wanna risk any leakage because then the meat doesn't look very pretty. So we give that a double seal. And then what I like to do is to take my scales and then I weigh them out this is 587 grams, so that's a nice big steak. So 587, because then I know what I'm dealing with when I take them from the freezer later. So I'll continue vacuuming all these, and then when we get to the end, I'll see you again. And that is a beautiful lineup of steaks right there. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, what's not to love right here? It's just beautiful. But we, as I said, we're gonna do an experiment. So I've chosen a steak here that's already been vacuumed and weighed out at 458 grams. And the brother that was right next to it, you see, they're almost the same. So now we're gonna do an experiment because this one, I'm going to salt it now, vacuum it. And these two we will leave in the fridge for 24 hours before we freeze them. And then we will test them in a later episode if it's a good idea to salt prior to freezing or not. So that's a little bit of an experiment. And then we have this puppy over here with a nice spinalis, mm. because obviously we cannot make all these steaks and not be hungry. So <laughs> of course we're gonna cook a little bit today because we're gonna make this one, we're gonna reverse sear it. So we have our afternoon snack. Yeah, you call that a snack? <laughs> yeah, that is a snack for our Saturday afternoon, trust me. So we put snack in a whole new level. Baby. It's a new level of snack, new level of snack. This one, we're gonna give a nice coating of sea salt, a relatively heavy coating because it is, a, it is a thick steak there around this 450, 60 grams. So give it a nice coat. And then we're gonna flip it and give it the same treatment on the other side. And then we're gonna test these two out in a week or two so they get time to freeze so we can see if it makes a difference. And as I said, we will try it out on our new Kamado Joe, Kettle Joe, that we just bought with our own good money. So, let me vacuum this up, and then we're gonna cook that one afterwards. See you in five minutes. Here we are at the gas grill, all five burners running on full blast, and it's blazing hot. See, my preferred way of doing this would be to salt this and then leave it to dry brine in the fridge overnight, 24 hours, but we just cut it, and we have to taste it. And we can't wait. <laughs> we can't wait. So we are going the other way. There is another school that says that you grill your steak and then you salt it at the table. So that's what we're going to try today. So up with the lid and we take our beautiful, I mean, look at the spinalis and that thing. I mm, mean. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you want that, Asta? That's not fair. Okay. Directly on the grill with that. And let's see how this is looking. This is looking Ooh. really good. Now we leave it at a new spot here, and then we're gonna flip it a couple of times till we have a nice crust, because as we said, we are reverse searing this, so it will go in the oven in a bit. I'll show you. Let's have a sneak peek here, and this is starting to look real pretty. Oh my look God. Look at that, and it, smells. and it smells good. Now look here, the fat cap. I'm just gonna take it a little bit now, and then I'm gonna hold it here just for a little bit, just to render out the fat from the fat cap, but this is a beautiful steak. And when that's done, we are gonna put it here on a rack, and then I'm gonna add a thermometer, this armature one, into the middle part of the steak here, so we can monitor the temperature. And this goes to the oven, and we put it on the middle rack at 140 degrees, and then we're gonna let it rest here until it gets to, let's say, 53, 54 degrees core temperature. And then it's just 10 minutes rest and we're ready to eat. We just hit 54 degrees, so now it's time to get our puppy out of the oven. Ooh, that smells good. I mean, <laughs> that's like, 
the first barbecue ribeye of the season. That is just wonderful. Get it on the board, and then we're gonna tint it with a bit of foil, just to let it rest for five, eight, 10 minutes. Give it 10 minutes if you can, if you have the patience. Let's see if I have it. Oh, I'm so excited. Barbecue <laughs> season, you know, it's like when they sent the cows out to grass, you know, they're jumping up and down like that. I remember <laughs> that when I was a kid at my grandparents' farm, actually. Let's see how this is doing. And I promised to save the spinalis for you. No, 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 you can try a bit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's give it a cut down here at this end to see how we did. I don't know if you can see, because mm. sometimes the camera cheats a little bit on the color, but this is perfect medium rare. It looks a little bit too pale on camera. There you see it better. Now yeah, you yeah. get it, now you get it. A couple of slices here. Oof, that's this is so good. And I'm gonna salt this up with some smoked sea salt. We also have it with lemon, we have regular sea salt, but now I felt like some smoky salt here to give them a layer of. This is one school that says that this is a good way to eat your steak. Again. I don't think there is a bad way to eat your steak. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you're right on that. Yeah. But let me give this and see if Creekstone Farm, they live up to their reputation. Creekstone Farm, we are not sponsored in any way, but that is damn good beef. Cooked to perfection, no gray zone, medium rare wall to wall. Next episode, we are gonna do a test on the two other ribeyes on our new Camaro Joe, as I said, but this, definitely recommended.